Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor you have broken us on the day of Midian, for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will read the psalm. The psalm for today is Psalm 96. Let us pray it in unison. 
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of salvation day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples for great. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, the Lord of the heavens, all the majesty and majesty. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor. Ascribe to the Lord and bring to his name. Bring and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his home. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words 
and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. It is good to have stepped into this pulpit for the first time since March the 8th. A fitting way to celebrate Christmas. Perhaps Mary was prepared for the unusual and unexpected. But as her water broke and she and Joseph entered Bethlehem, it is easy to imagine the response almost any daughter about to give birth would have. No, no, not now. Not so far from my mom and my family. This isn't how I planned it. No, not this. And yet, in a matter of hours, Christ came. Distance from family was not the only disappointment that night. Though Joseph had returned to Bethlehem because it was his family's hometown, he too does not seem to have any relatives nearby. They cannot steer their donkey to Joseph's childhood home and secure the support of his parents. Perhaps they too have moved, or perhaps they're just too embarrassed by their future daughter-in-law's claims about who the real father is of their future grandchild. So Joseph and Mary have to search for an inn. Not a Hampton inn with fluffy pillows on the bed and free muffins for breakfast, but more like an ancient hostel. Two walls built to provide shelter from the wind where people of all types could sleep on the ground with their animals secured nearby. But the floor was already full and there was no more room at the inn. Perhaps because there were so many people traveling for the census or perhaps because the innkeeper didn't want a mother or a child's cries to pierce an otherwise silent night and result in negative comments on his Airbnb profile. No. Not here, Mary must have thought. Not with a feeding trough for a crib. No. Not like this. And yet, Christ came. The good news of Christ's coming was shared first with the shepherds, a group not well regarded or trusted in that day. And Christ came at a time when God's chosen people were ruled by Augustus, the emperor of Rome, who regarded himself as the Son of God and who others proclaimed was the Savior of the world. And yet, Christ came. Not in the powerful in palaces, but to the shady shepherds in the field. And the miracle arrived in the most unexpected of ways. The fullness of God filling the soft skin of a newborn. The voice who spoke light into existence crying for milk. The hands that would one day heal the leper and hold the whole world wrapped around Mary's finger, looking for comfort and closeness. And what have we done with this Christ child who came into the world so long ago? Curiously, the church did not emphasize the birth of Christ for the first 300 years. When the early church did gather to celebrate the resurrection and other major feast days, they usually did so in underground catacombs to avoid persecution. 
Over time, the church wrote beautiful hymns to celebrate Christmas. We began lighting candles to bring light into this darkest time of the year. 202 years ago, a church in Austria realized its organ was broken just before Christmas. There was no time to properly fix it before Christmas Eve services. Their priest, Joseph Moore, must have thought, no, we can't celebrate Christmas like this without music, without the organ. No, not like this. And he remembered a poem he had written about the birth of Jesus a couple of years earlier. And on Christmas Eve morning, he shared those simple words with the church organist and asked if he could write an arrangement for the guitar and two solo voices. That evening, the church sang Silent Night for the very first time. And Christ came. This year has been a year unlike any other in most of our lives. It is hard to imagine that we are still dealing with all of this at Christmas. But here we are. Like Mary and Joseph, many of us cannot be with our families this year in the ways that we want to be. We miss our traditions, the food, the stories shared, the memories made. We cannot worship all of us together in this sanctuary where hundreds of people nestle together in this sacred place that holds almost a century and a half of prayer and worship and faithfulness. All over the world, so many have lost loved ones this year to illness and now face the stark reality of one less stocking on the mantle. Some have lost jobs and are struggling to put food on the table, never mind gifts under the tree. And it is true to say we have all, every person on earth has lost something this year. We are all carrying trauma and grief. And yet, especially into this darkest and most difficult of times, Christ comes. Tonight, Christ comes. He is born in us. When we believe that suffering and death cannot be the end of our story, and we defiantly hope, for what is to come. He is born in us when we see God's image within every human being, no matter how different they may be. He is born in the 85-year-old great-grandmother who buys a new computer and learns Zoom to stay connected to her family and her church. He's born in each person who offers a bagged lunch to a hungry neighbor and in each, each present purchased for children in need. He is born in us with each pump of hand sanitizer, each tug of the mask to cover our nose. Christ comes amidst our phone calls and socially distanced visits to check on each other. Christ comes in each doctor, nurse, aide, and first responder who has shown up day after day after day to care for the sick. Christ comes in the teachers and parents who have given every ounce of strength and patience to make online school work. And Christ comes in the laughter of children still caught up in the wonder of this season. Christ comes in each person who selflessly offered themselves for vaccine trials and in all of the people who have worked to develop safe, effective vaccines Christ comes tonight as we fumble with new video equipment and read and preach and sing through masks. Christ comes as we gather outside, 
hoping that our candles won't be blown out by the wind. Christ comes. Christ comes. Christ comes. To our imperfect and broken world, hurting just as it is, to bring light, to give hope, to offer meaning to our lives, and to defeat sickness and death forever. Christ comes no matter what we are expecting. Come, oh come, let us adore him. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the God who became human through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Brothers and sisters, on this most holy night of our Lord's birth, that we may find peace joy and contentment in this holy season. Let us pray for ourselves and all those in need of our prayers saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church of Christ, that it may faithfully proclaim the good news of salvation and may care for the needs of God's people in all corners of the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace in our troubled world, that the darkness of war and injustice may be replaced by the light of peace and love, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need of our prayers, the homeless, the unemployed, the hungry, those who are hospitalized, those who are imprisoned in body or soul, and all those for whom this season is not one of joy, but of trial and sadness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those with the virus, that their illnesses may be turned to health and their sorrow into rejoicing. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who labor this night on behalf of others, doctors and nurses, police officers and firefighters, gas station attendants, bus and taxi drivers, and all those whose work prevents them from sharing this evening with those they love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we remember the lives of those who have gone before us in the faith, that we, like them, may remain faithful to the end and live forever in the light of your eternal glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of darkness and silence, you have pierced the quiet of this night by your utterance of your word in our flesh. May our words of praise and petition be strong echoes of your Christmas word, so that all might come to the peace you promise in Jesus, who is Lord and God this night and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You all can be seated. Merry Christmas and welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church where we are celebrating the good news that Jesus Christ is born through worship, loving community, and service. During the 12 days of Christmas, which start tomorrow on Christmas Day, no matter what Mariah Carey might say, we have a special way for you to stay connected to God and the music of Christmas. Each morning, you will receive a special email from Calvary with a short reflection written by one of our choir members or musicians about a favorite Christmas Carol. We've named this devotion series Living the Carols. The email will also have a link to the Christmas Carol that you're reflecting on so you can listen and uh, uh, so you can listen to the music as well. If you want to sign up to be part of this, if you're not receiving the Calvary Scroll, just go to our website at cecbastrop.org. Click the subscribe to the Calvary Scroll e-news button at the top right hand of the screen and you'll be all set. We will have online services only this Sunday. The service will be available at 8 a.m. or on demand. You can also join us for a virtual coffee hour at 10 a.m. on Zoom. We invite you to kick off the new year with us as we read the Gospel of Mark together as a community starting on New Year's Day. You can sign up for daily emails with the readings and lots of other good resources at goodbookclub.org. As we come to the end of the year, we are grateful for all of your uh, stewardship and financial support of our ministry this year. Uh, any donations you want credited to 2020 need to be postmarked by December 31st. Now our offertory sentence for this Christmas season comes from the great Christmas hymn, In the Bleak Midwinter. What can I give him? Poor as I am, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Joseph and Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you joining us online, I invite you to pray with us the prayer uh, for spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, be born anew in our hearts as you were born that night in Bethlehem, that we may be united entirely to you and never be separated from you. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven and earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.